Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. This is gonna be part two of the in-depth review for unit five of AP Computer Science, which is writing classes. In this second part of the video, I'm going to be going over the practice test which I made for you. Uh, the link to the practice test is actually in the description below of both this video and the uh, previous part of the video. In the previous part of the video, I went over all of the different things that is inside of unit five, which is writing classes. And I, t and I kind of reviewed all of those things. And then this video will be going over a practice exam, which I made for you to uh, be able to practice for maybe an in-class test or even the AP exam for unit five. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So the particular um, practice test that I made is only a free response section this time. Usually I do a multiple choice and a free response. This case, I'm only doing a free response because this unit really um, goes off of unit two. So I recommend if you want a multiple choice component for unit five, redo the unit two uh, practice test, which I made. If you scroll up on the um, AP Computer Science playlist on my channel or just scroll in the history, you will see the um, review for unit two, which was using objects. So you can either click on part one or part two of that video. And then in the description below, I will have the practice test for unit two. I definitely recommend doing the multiple choice in that if you need to prepare for a multiple choice uh, type of thing for unit five. In this particular video though, I'm only going over a single FRQ because this is the only really thing that we need more practice on. The multiple choice, we have already talked about everything that will be inside of the multiple choice in unit two. All right, so the question says, this question involves the implementation of a train class. All right, a train class. So I am writing a class. A train object is created with two parameters that specify the name of the train. So again, since we're talking about name, we can already start to think of a type that we may use for this. Right, we can use the string type from unit one. And you can really think about this because as you're reading through, it makes it becomes very easy to kind of um, start working on free responses and being able to have the right setup for you to be successful in the question. If you think about, for example, the different types as you're reading, right, as you're reading the actual question, it may be more helpful to you later on, especially if you're in a time constraint. So name of the train will generally be a string and then whether or not the train is diesel or not and if you think about it diesel yes or not diesel right that's a binary choice so this is likely going to be a boolean right so it says the train class has the following fields name which stores the name of the train we already said that this could be a string right is diesel stores whether or not the train has a diesel engine this would likely be a boolean right and then the number of passengers. This is likely going to be an integer. It's going to be a whole number as you're going to have, hopefully, whole people on the actual train only. So that now it talks about the fields. And then we have the constructor, right? So you create a constructor using two parameters, one that specifies the name and one that specifies whether or not it is diesel. And that was in the sentence up here which I can highlight, right, is created with two parameters that specify the name of the train and whether or not the engine is a diesel engine. Then we can look at the fields, right? It says that we have two fields, I mean two methods. This should say methods here. This should say methods. So if you got confused about that, that, that is supposed to say methods, okay? The train class has the following methods, and this will be updated when I actually um, put it in the description. That will not be it's just a spelling mistake on my copy, all right? So the train class has the following methods. You have add passengers, which adds a, a certain number of passengers to the number passengers field, and then the load passengers will set the number of parameters to zero, or the number of passengers to zero. All right, so you can see down here, it just says write the complete train class, including a constructor and any required instance variables. So this is where we write everything that it asks us to write. The first thing we have to write is the actual class. And because we know that we are trying to com complete a train class, we want to make the name of our class train. If, you're, if you remember back though, how do we create a class? Well, the first thing we have to choose whether it's going to be private or public. And if you remember, classes are always public. So we will write public here 
And I go over this in specifics of the unit two review and also the part one of this particular video. So I have public, and then I use the class keyword to specify that I'm actually creating a class. Then I follow it with the name of the class that I'm trying to create, which is train. I'm going to do an open and close parentheses here, okay? And then I can add a little comment if I want to that this is the end of class, right? End of class, just so that you know you may be able to keep track of that. So if you remember here, we have three fields that we need to initialize. The first one is going to be the name. And we already said that this should be a string type because you're trying to store actual text. So we here we can say the, the type. So string name, right? And we leave it uninitialized because it is a field in this case, and it doesn't say that we should set it to any specific value at start, right? And then it says is diesel, which stores whether or not the train has a diesel engine. So you can say Boolean because remember, uh, we, we said that it should be a Boolean because it's a binary choice. Is diesel, is, is, wait, so make sure. Okay, is diesel, and then I have my semicolon. And then the last field I want to create is going to be num passengers. And you can see here, it says this field is initially set to zero. So I'm going, to say int num passengers. The part about the fact that it's going to initially be, the fact that it's going to be initially uh, set to zero is going to be inside of the constructor. So all of these things right here are part of our fields. Now we have to create our method, or we have to create our constructor. So we have to, again, because this is something we're trying to create, we have to use the public or private keyword. In fact, one thing I forgot to do up here, fields. What should fields be? Should they be public or private? Well, if you remember from the last video, fields should be listed, fields should be listed as private. So I will write private in front of all of these. I almost forgot to add that, private for all of these. And then also for the constructor, which is the next thing we want to create, right? You have the choice of public or private. So just like the class, we want to make constructors public. So I use the public keyword, public, right? And then I put the name of the class as the name of my constructor. I do open and close parentheses, and then I can put in my parameters. Well, here, in my constructor, I have two parameters. I have a name and I have a is diesel parameter. Then these values will initialize our fields. So I can say here the name. So I can say string, right, name. And then I can say Boolean. I can just say is D here to make it a little bit shorter. And then I do open and close parentheses. Now inside of here is where I initialize my fields. So to access my fields, I have to use the this keyword, the dot operator, and then the name of the field. So I do this name, and I set this equal to the name parameter that I specified up here. Now I can do it for is diesel. I can say this dot, is is diesel equals my is d parameter right over here and then the last thing i want to do is i want to do this dot num passengers because i need to initialize that as well and if you remember in the instructions it said that i have to initialize this to a value of zero at the beginning so I will initialize this to the value of zero. All right, so now I've done my fields and I have done my constructor for this particular class. The last thing I have to do are the methods and there are two pretty simple methods here. I'm going to again move my end of class down so we have a little bit more room. And the first thing it says, add passengers, which adds the, the value of the parameter to the num passengers field. In this case, 
Again, we have to think about oh, do we want to use the public or the private keyword? Again, for the sake of, the, of method specifically, we're going to generally want to use the public keyword. We could use private in certain cases when it benefits us, but for right now, we will just stick with public. So I will type, I'll write public, and then I want to specify the type, and I guess I could specify the type in this, in this uh, blue color. I want to specify the type, right, of what I'm going to be returning. Well, first, am I going to be returning anything? It doesn't appear so. It doesn't say in my question that I want to return anything. I'm simply modifying a field, right? So I can say, because we don't want a return value, right, we need to set the return type to void. Okay? Now we look at the name of our method we want to create, which is add passengers. Open, close parentheses. And then the parameter for this particular method is going to be the num passengers to add parameter, which will be an integer. So I'll say int num, and uh, I may need more space. Let me move this over. Num passengers to add, just like that. And then I have open br uh, curly bracket and close curly bracket. And now the only thing I have to do here is I simply have to add this value to my num passengers field. It's actually very simple. So again, how do I access the num passengers field? I have to use the this keyword and then the dot operator, then num passengers. And then I can use the plus equals the compound assignment operator from unit one to add num passengers num passengers to add to my num passengers uh, field so that completes the add passengers methods very very simple and now my last method is unload passengers which sets the num passengers field back to zero so in order to create this, we again have to use our um, either public or private keyword. In this case, again, because we're creating a method, we will generally stick with the public keyword. Then I look at my return type. Am I returning anything in this particular function? No, it doesn't ask me to return anything. All I'm doing is I'm setting a, a field to zero. I'm not need, I don't need to return anything. So therefore, I will set my return type to void, right? And also a key, a key thing with this, if you remember, we talked about return statements, if we are returning some sort of value, because we have void here and here, we will not need a return statement at the end of the method. All right, so I wrote public void, and then I have to put the name of my uh, specific method, which is unload passengers. So I'm going to do unload passengers. And then open, close parentheses. And because I have no parameters, I leave it blank. And then I do open and close uh, brace just like that. Okay? And now the last thing I want to do is I want to access my field, num passengers, and set it to zero. So in order to do this, I again use the this keyword. I use the dot operator to be able to access the fields of the, um, of the actual object. And I then do num passengers as this is the field that I want to edit. And then I use the assignment operator and I set it to, and for color consistency, I'll make sure that it is orange. I set it equal to zero, just like that. So these two things that we created down here, these are our methods, right? So if you look here, what we've done is we've created a, we've created a class called train. We have three fields, right? The name, which is a string. Uh, is diesel, which is a boolean, and then num passengers, which is an integer. And then we created the constructor, which has two parameters, one for the name and one, one for the initial state of the name and one for the initial state of is diesel. And then I set it to the appropriate fields. And then the last thing is I set the num passengers equal to zero as it's specified in the instructions. And then I worked on my methods. I have the add passengers method, which adds 
to the num passengers field depending on the amount that I specified inside of my inside of my parameter num passengers to add. And then I lastly have the last method, which is unload passengers, which sets the num passengers uh, field or field to zero. So that is the that is the correct solution to the actual free response question. Now, the only thing the only thing that I could see, which um, some people may have done slightly differently, is they may have up here in this line where they initialize the field number or when they create the field num passengers some people may have said private int num passengers equals 0 because it is the you know initial thing and it doesn't require some sort of input you can do that um, and it will still yield the exact same thing whether you put it here or you put it up here but i'm just trying to keep it consistent like when i initially when i initialize fields in a newly created object i'm going to keep that generally in my constructor this is mainly for consistency purposes and also for you to see that these are the initial states of my variables and all of the initial states of my variables will be stored in the constructor and nowhere else just kind of makes it easier to read and also it follows the different things that we learned in unit five all right, so that is it for the practice test. Uh, if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day.